Welcome, welcome to a special halftime championship game edition. We want to get it in where we fit it in. Welcome to another episode of Keeping It Orange and Blue. I'm Ryan Evan, joined as always for Banna's Finest, Kevin Ducey. What's up, Ryan? Glad to be here. Glad to take this little halftime break here, put a bow on, put a bow on the season, talk a little bit about transfer portal stuff, uh, keep everybody in the loop because, as they say, the show must go on. The show must go on, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, t- to a degree, we'll put a little bow on it today, but, uh, you know, I'm – I'm beyond thrilled with where Illinois landed. Uh, definitely needed to get to the second weekend, and they got to an Elite Eight. And, you know, when you're watching the two teams play for the national championship game, those are the two teams that really gave Illinois the most trouble all year. I mean. Absolutely. Yep. And it I, was mean, like- I mean, that's really all you need to say. Like, <laughs> there were some other losses without Shannon and some heartbreakers on the road, which just happened, you know. So Yeah, and it's, it's as we move into transfer portal season, it's shining the light on some deficiencies that Illinois has had. Uh, you know, we saw early in the game, um, Klingon give Edie some problems, and then Purdue posted up Trey Kaufman Wren. Well, we we really didn't have either really of those options. We, I mean, and so I think that there's you'll you'll, you'll see some the way that Illinois will target the portal will be to address those things moving forward because Brad's not going to sit still. They definitely need to get some more physicality in the post. I mean, absolutely. And I think we already have someone coming in with Marez. Uh huh. Hansberry, another year, Fletch. Yeah. Um, and this I don't is think Jackson is, is projected to play at all. So, no. Um, and, and real briefly, I don't want to harp on it too long. We wish Jason Butler nothing but the best. But, uh, and again, I know you chimed in a little bit on what I said to Bossy, and you noticed he never answered me. Uh, because, you know, the point of my, what I'm saying is this. A- everyone has a right to do whatever they want. That's not slander for me just to keep it real, okay? The reason that Jace Butler isn't coming to Illinois, and they can sugarcoat it however they want, is he doesn't want to compete with older guards who they feel like could take his minutes and, and him have a lesser role on the team. And And no matter how you slice it, I never called him soft. He's not soft. But that does tell me you don't really want to compete with the best, you know. That tells I think it's me. Also, I think it's. I think it's a. Cha- it's a change in the demographics of the way that kids got to attack coming into college. And honestly, that, that, it might yes, be. That's, that's part. Uh, right. That's partially yeah. it, though. That's partially yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah. I think about the fact that Brandon Podjimski might make an All NBA rookie team, and he did that because he went to Santa Clara where he could go get a bunch of shots up, which fit his game. He was never going to do that at Illinois. He's never going to be the lead dog. And he allowed him to shine. I think honestly, like for Jace to go to Stanford, Santa Clara, St. Mary, something like that, it might work really well for him. I know he's a really smart kid. Loved having him on. Love his family. Think the yeah. world of him. Um, I just don't yeah. think there was a guarantee though that he wouldn't play next year. I don't think that. No, no I don't think so either. And I, I think that having young guards is challenging. I mean, young guards is what knocked Purdue out in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year as a number one seed with the National Player of the Year in the middle. So I don't think that that's Brad Underwood's goal here anymore. I really think you're going to see this more and more is teams are going to look at guys like Dante Maddox, Marcus Hill, and say, all right, you've proven yourself at the college level, or Marcus Damask, uh, and say, hey, you can come. Lance Jones is a great example. You guys have proven it at, at the college level against other 18 to 22-year-olds. Now let's bring you in here and get you ready for the Power Six Conference in the prime time. And – I think I'd like, you know, Jace might do that. And that might be the perfect fit for him because that's where guys get better. I mean, that's why there's been so many times in the NCAA tournament where you've seen upsets is because you see teams like in Oakland, who has a bunch of guys who have been around the program for a long time playing against, against a bunch of freshmen like Kentucky. And so, but now with the transfer portal, those guys don't stay at Oakland. Obviously, they, they, they've got their uh, their power forward, that six seven kid that's transferring out a heck of a rebounder. I think Illinois has shown some interest. I don't know really where we're at with him. But that's that's just the world we're living in. And I got nothing against Jason. It's the best decision for him. And yeah, yeah. I don't I don't I don't think it's soft. It's just it's if a kid wants to play, nobody wants to sit the bench. So yeah. And again, I never said he was soft. So whoever was saying he was soft, I'm not saying Bossy said that I did, but that I did tweet about it. And you could tell he's like, anybody tweeting about Jace, you know. But I was like, he's like, it's not about competitive blah blah. There is it is got to do with <laughs> You know, it is because the guess what? You, if anyone thinks that Brad Underwood wouldn't play the best players, he, that's just crazy. Yeah, you know, I don't, 
I think more, like you look at Merez, he's coming into more of a position of need, and I'm not sure he's going to play 25, 30 minutes next year. I'm really not. Yeah, that, that is something, too, to worry about. A smart man told me, he said, uh, you see Jace Butler leaving? He goes, if if Merez Johnson plays about as much as Dane does did last year, and that's what some of them are projecting, <laughs> I don't that he's so. going to play like a Dane minutes or maybe a little bit more that Merez might want to leave. So, um, anyway. I, I don't think that'll be the case with Merez, but I don't. I, I think that Merez might do, you know, play 18 to 22 minutes. I think that's fair. Um, I got to say this. Does I'm sorry, Miller Stan. Does anybody think that I look at what hoodie tweets? I got to be honest, man. Yeah. I got so much more shit going on in my life. Mm-hmm. There's a reason I have a mute button. Um, so whatever mute, whatever hoodie tweeted, I applaud the man. It's good for him. Um, so Dante Maddox is the first name. Let's get to. Uh, you know, it's been reported and you've seen it all over Twitter, but it's been a name we've talked about before in the last week or two. If you watch, Marcus Hill seems like a name that I was told, Kev. Has been, knocked, has been knocked down a notch, though. Dante Maddox is has kind of slotted in front of, of him. Have you heard differently? Uh, no, actually, I, a week ago, I would I would have had it inversed. Uh, where we're at now, I think I'm I'm with you. I think Illinois is leaning t- towards Maddox. Uh, Maddox is visiting Louisville. Um, Chicago kid, Chicago Heights. Uh, played up the uh, cool stand. My bad, I didn't know what he was tweeting. Appreciate it. Yeah, so Maddox. Um, I'm trying to look up like I'm, I think he's, he'll be a fifth year. Uh, yeah, grad transfer, right? 40 percent, 40 percent from deep, 86 from the line. Well, you know, it was Toledo. Yeah, and, and not just and not just 40 percent from deep this year, 40 percent from his career shot 45 last year, 43 as a freshman at Cal State Fullerton, average 12 points a game there. Um, average was, this, was that his second or third year at Toledo? Second. So he, he'll be so he'll him be, and Ray J. Dennis were teammates. I mean. They, they were they you know, they were kicking yeah. butt there at Toledo. So scoring um, a lot of points, but not guarding people. <laughs> yes. Well, he would have fit in last year's team. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, played at Bloom. Yeah. So and yeah. and and I know that there's uh, Tim Anderson's got his hand in this. And you know, as much as I love Pat Kelsey and the hire at Louisville, the dude's got some swag. He's he's got a big pay, paycheck. He's got a big nil to use. He also he has a- zero returning scholarship players. Yes, so that's another thing. Does Dante Maddox want to spend his fifth and final season being the being the re, hopefully a building block for a future where they can do something? And I doubt your one's going to be the answer there. Um, yeah, hey, and uh, the Marcus Hill situation is a little bit different. Illinois, Illinois had to pull some strings uh, to get. Uh, Terrence Shannon in because Illinois requires that if you're going to have an undergraduate program at the University of Illinois that you take more than 60 of those hours at the University of Illinois. And so that was a little bit of the issue with Terrence coming in. It's Michigan has the same thing. Illinois got a waiver. Whitman pulled some strings there. Um, I, I think Marcus Hill, he played two years at JUCO and then he's got a year at Bowling Green. He's a bigger yeah. guard. Um, he's 6'4". I really like his play around the rim. He was really heavily leaned on, scored 20 points a game. But I think one of the things that was really enticing about him is that he, he and uh, AJ Store are tight. Uh, played played some high school ball together. Um, my guess is Illinois, as they were venturing out to Marcus Hill, was kind of like, "Hey, AJ, is this going to entice you?" And I I, I would almost um, this is pure speculation, folks. I would guess that Illinois heard back from from the store camp that that's not going to make a difference in his decision. And so maybe Maddox is what the staff sees as a better fit for Illinois. 100%. I think too, is it, here's another thing. Okay. Since here, Harris is coming back, by the way, I loved his mixtape. He looks like he's improved his game. You know, I know it's practice, but still, if you can do that in practice, you should be able to do that in a game. I mean, he was doing it with Ty, Ty Rogers guarding him at times. I mean, it, yeah, it was a problem for Illinois allow, allowing guards to drive, but he he hit a couple of pull up shots, put deep threes. But 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 my point would be is this: we can't just expect Ty's. I mean, Sincere is going to come in and shoot forty next year. You know what I mean? No, no, he, no, no. So you're no. going to have Ty Rogers. You're going to have Harris. Maybe he'll be a thirty percent shooter from deep, which would be a big improvement. Well, I, I think that's what he shot pretty well from deep. He didn't shoot well from free throw. Line. So, do we want to bring a guy in, another guy who doesn't shoot really tons of threes, or do we want to bring a guy, a sharpshooter who can space the floor? Absolutely. Yep. When you start talking about roster management, that's where that's where Maddox is probably a better fit. 
um, than Marcus Hill. And, and look, Brandon, there's nothing wrong with talking Cubby in here. I'll let, I'll let Kev say a couple words about the Cubs. Cubs had a long inning. Yes, <laughs> and Brad not going anywhere. You no. really think Story's coming? You really think Story's coming here? I mean, I would say this. I know a lot of other people in the know think Illinois is leading right now. I I would say that the the, the number one thing that would keep AJ Store from coming to Illinois is the National Basketball Association. Yeah, uh, I mean AJ Store is going to go feel out what the camps get the get the NBA feedback that that he's going to have. I mean, dude, he's got size, he's got athleticism, he's got things that the NBA covets. He might. He, he, he might end up being – if he gets a first-round yeah. grade, he's probably staying in. You yeah. can't blame a guy. But if he doesn't, I do think Illinois is in a good place. I, I'm going to say this. I would – I think you're going to see a similar thing with Shannon and and Storr. I don't believe Storr's game right now is better than where Shannon's was last year. I think it's pretty similar. Uh, I also think there's going to be some questions about how much effort he's given per every – every time up and down the floor and those scouts aren't going to sugarcoat that for him. I mean, they're going to tell you, dude, we don't really like your attitude. Sometimes I think we think you mope, you know, like how great of a teammate are you? Cause you got to remember Greg garden and them are going to be honest, you know? You know yeah. Well, and, and, and I think that Brad Underwood would be a great fit for him. And my understanding is Brad Underwood's kind of leading the charters on this recruitment, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So um, yeah. And I think Illinois is offering the most money as of right now too. So, uh, you know, people, since it's so public now, you know, Kansas offered 750 and he's like, nah, it's not. Illinois offered more than that. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. And that, that's another point. Um, but Steve S., and it wasn't me trying to de- talk, talk bad about him because let me tell you, I would take him in a heartbeat. I think the athleticism, his range, and I think just the pressure he puts on opposing defenses is too much to to uh, turn away. He's also a really good free throw shooter too. So, And he can be a phenomenal defender. Anybody who can, who has the athleticism, I forgot which professional coach I heard say, say it, say anybody, if you can play offense, you can play defense. And uh, if, you know, if you got the athleticism, you can play. It's just. Jay Beggin. We, we, we did discuss that. Appreciate you, brother. But you do know Tim Anderson's leading this. Louisville has nobody returning. And tell me, with Illinois, who has guys returning from an Elite Eight, Louisville hasn't done anything in years. You really think – do you think Maddox would be leading leading to Louisville right now? I'm just saying, I just can't see it. But I can't either. I'm just being honest, though, Beg. And if you really think about it, I know kids do the darnest say that and do the darnest things. But I really don't believe that uh, he would do that for his career, you know, because there's no guarantees – that Louisville is even going to be decent this year. I think they can't be much, be- you know, worse than they were last year. But why would a player want to go to a team where there's so many question marks? Unless they're just offering a fat bag of NIL. Yeah, they, they want to give them seven fifty, eight hundred thousand. I mean, yeah. I don't know, you know, and then, then Dante would be a fool not to go take it. Uh, but I think you can look at you can look at what Illinois has done with the transfers and how they've accelerated and grown their game at Illinois. So he'd have a great chance to win. Um, he'd have an opportunity to be on one shining moment next year at this point in time. Like a lot of Illinois guys are going to have that here. In I'm excited year. to see that this year. How many Illinois is going to have a couple, I think. Will Terrence Shannon be on? <laughs> Over under of no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like one shining moment. He had the most points through four games. <laughs> one shining moment. No, we let's just blur him out. Yeah, blur him out. Okay, so now Kev, I think any, the I think the bigs are, are a little bit more intriguing, right? I think Illinois is really yeah. Give me a name really- that maybe we've talked about before or that you've just heard recently that you think they're going to really try to push and get a visit for uh, Igor Milicic from Charlotte uh, started at Virginia uh, shoots about shot 37%, 38% from three sh- 36 career percent, three point shooter uh, eight and a half rebounds block a game. So he can defend. He's I think he's six 11, uh, six, 10, 224 pound kid uh, from Croatia. Uh, really, really skilled. That's a guy that I'm hearing we're, we're, we're pretty interested in right now. And then Omar Ballo is in the portal. Mm. That's pretty new, pretty big news out of Arizona. 
I hear that Illinois, there might be some mutual interest there as well. So that would be an, uh, Brad would have to adjust the offensive game. By the way, I'll go back to the first question, as always, by our guy, Sean Garner, about Marcus Damascus, that we they have filed for the petition uh, for him to get that extra year eligibility. So we're just kind of in a wait and see moment. So, so I'm going to throw out a couple names here. Kerry Booth from Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yeah. As a kid that uh, maybe not be your wouldn't be your five per se, you know, more of like a Coleman body type, similar player. Same with Ben Homerchis from Evansville. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude can stroke the three. Really good shooter. Yep, and then uh, of course Danny Wolf from uh, Yale. Yep, absolutely. Is another one. And that whole situation with Michigan seems to be interesting because man, I, I really don't see if Lad Golden ends up following Dusty May. Uh, like, why would Danny Wolf go there? Because you know he's not going to start. So it's kind of like Danny Wolf has to make a decision for him, like where he's going to go, where is he going to play, and make as much money as he can. You know, and I think like Vlad and Golden's going to automatically be the guy for Dusty May. Well, if if but if if they like Wolf, then we get in, we get in oh, the, Golden. yeah, we get in the Golden play. Uh. Oh, we love the Stanford guy, Raynaud. We talked about him all. Raynaud Maxime, but it's I don't know that we're getting any traction from a two way standpoint from everything that I've heard right now. Yeah. Um, okay. Otega Otega Owe from Oklahoma. Uh, we recruited him out of high school. Averaged eleven points a game, I think, for Oklahoma. Really athletic wing player. And there's also Brandon Garrison, the Oklahoma Oklahoma State center freshman. Really long, athletic kid. And then Oklahoma State had another kid that hit the portal. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, I'll look it up here. Is it Javon Small? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, that guy, that would be a heck of a get. <laughs> yeah. We love Maxine Reynolds' game. I'm going to be honest. I think if you could say what big would you take over anybody, I'd take Reynaud If Absolutely. If, It'd be 1A for me. Yeah. So other than that. Um, yeah, there's tons of just options right now. Like when I talk to a couple of my sources, I'm like, so who are they feeling the best on right now? And he'll just say, they got 30 guys right now. Like they're trying to pick, you know? So I'm just like, oh, okay. I mean, that's a good, that's a good thing. You know, it's like, and they got guys coming for them. It's not like they're just, a t they're just, you know, mess coming for guys and messaging them like, Hey, we have interest. It's mutual interest. So, um, now, with that, we're only going to keep you a couple about five more minutes here. The Jeremiah Fears reclassification, you know, what are you thinking about that, Kev? People are talking about it. I think it's very doubtful because they know the strength program at Illinois and they want him to be ready to, 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 to be as top notch as possible when he first steps in, you know. But I know it's kind of with, with Jace Butler leaving and maybe he's itching to play right now, but I know his dad's leading his recruitment. Yeah, I, I think from, you know, we had Ryan Ferran on earlier uh, this month or right before the tournament, and Ryan is pretty tied in with that recruitment until I hear him say otherwise. Uh, but I think that the, the, that Fears is making the right decision if he stays in school for one more year. Um, haven't been a lot of, you know, you see Kylan Boswell might enter the portal. That's been ru ru rumored. Yeah, to and that head period ends Thursday, folks, so. Yeah, uh, and, and Boswell, Boswell, Boswell was a reclass kid. I mean, he's only 18 years old, and he's played two years at Arizona. So um, you also had the the Lander kid, Christian Lander, who ended up at Western Kentucky from India. I just there hasn't been a lot of guys who came in with like that were really hyped up that reclassed as guards uh, that have performed well at the college level. I do think there's some seasoning, but dude, you saw it the other night when uh, he was playing against Cooper Flag and those guys. Man, the kid held his own, dude. I'm so excited about him coming down. Oh my goodness, the best player on the floor of the first half. It doesn't yeah. matter how the game ended. Remember, it's not one on five. I mean. Well, it he is did. IMG went undefeated this year too. So yeah, so love love his game. Stoked for it. Um, uh, by the way, we are supposedly getting a visit from AJ Diabonsa. Yeah, Diabonsa. Yeah, yeah. Which guys? He might be the best high school player in America. I think he might be better than Cooper Flag. Right. Yeah, I know people are. I've had people say, "Oh, it'd just be for show. It'd just be the." It just be the, you know, like, oh, but it's like, hell, Illinois is an old Nike school and his, his best friend is at Illinois. So, hey. We got money. Anything can happen. 
Anything can happen. Um, really quickly here, because the second half just started, folks. Is there a timeline for Damask? You know, I think there would be. I mean, the NCAA is not just going to linger for months. I think they're, they might. Yeah, they could, but I would think they wouldn't. You know, but I would probably imagine we'll hear something, something by the end of the month. Yeah. So that would that will also open up another door for them too, because if he's coming back, you know, that's one less scholarly. Yep. So that helps in that sense. Um, yeah. So we tried to jam pack as much as we could in here in 20, 25 minutes. Um, so big news and big announcement coming tomorrow for our podcast. Not going to ruin the name of it, but let me tell you, me and Kevin are thrilled to be joining one huge community of college athletic podcasts. It's going to be the biggest independent site. We're going to have our own page where you can see anything any podcast we've had links to our uh our twitters we're gonna have article we're gonna be able to post articles up on that 200 columns is still a thing and maybe articles that we put for college the college huddle will probably trans i mean yeah the college uh yeah the hub big 10 huddle uh or whatever that you will go for um our, our website. So that's actually been out and been announced by other people. So uh, I'm just excited when it launches tomorrow. And Kev, what's your thoughts on it real quick before we jump well, off? I'm super excited because of the, the, the doors that it's going to open. You know, we do this for you guys, uh, for the fans, so they can get better access to it. And what it's going to do is there's some really, really huge opportunities for Ryan and I to have a guest on when we're getting ready to play UCLA for the first time in football or Oregon or even a, even a non-con foe of a smaller school, or if we're going to yeah. have a big, big non-conference basketball game in the middle on a Saturday, like we'll bring somebody in and we've got access to all those guys. They'll bring us in. It, it'll be really interesting um, to see how we can leverage this and just get you guys more information for free in your hands. And there's going to be national shows that sometimes, yes. Kevin, I try to get him on. He's a busy man. He's going to have opportunities to jump on, but you already know I'm going to. I'll Heck be yeah. on uh, I'll be on Wednesday night on one of their national shows. So yeah. awesome. we'll, be annou- we'll be announcing tomorrow. We'll be, we're going to tweet it, post it. We'll be putting the new logos up on, on the top of our – it'll be right in the corner of this podcast because we're going to be proud to be part of it. And, uh, again – that's right. Uh, yeah, wake up tomorrow knowing we never have to see Edie again. That's yeah. right. Hey, a couple things. Uh, somebody asked about players transferring out. Uh, obviously, Sincere said he's staying. I don't. I haven't heard any names. I haven't heard any rumblings. Uh, I've heard some rumors, but I think they're they're just that. They're the rumors. I don't see it at the moment, but that can change. This is really fluid. Last year, at this point in time, our starting lineup. If you if you looked at who Illinois had committed and and was staying, would have been. DGL, Sincere Harris, Ty Rogers, Luke Goody, and Dane Danger. That obviously was not our starting lineup when we started the season. So just understand where we're at April 8th. This is all very fluid. Uh, also understand this. There is going to be some coaching movement that's going to happen that's going to open some doors. Not only, um, you know, Kentucky is the huge, huge opening that's out there. They're going to go after every big fish they can, including Bobby Hurley. I don't think, uh, excuse me, Danny Hurley. I don't see that happening. I'm not really sure where they're going to turn or where they're going to go, but I do not foresee that being Brad Underwood. But what I could see is it continue to have this chain of events where potentially uh, Chester Frazier might get an opportunity to interview for a smaller job and take an opportunity there, which would be great for Chester. We would all want that for him if that's where his heart's desiring to be a head coach at the college that's level. right and then there'll still be openings for other guys like orlando antigua <laughs> which which actually my understanding is orlando's separation from illinois was a lot more copacetic than chins so yes yes so with that said you'll see a big announcement with tomorrow we're going to keep coming at you we're excited about the future we'll have a fun one on sunday nights the plan there will be some big visits for Illinois basketball in the portal. We'll be hitting the portal and we'll be talking spring football. Um, Owen Anderson just just left. He's hitting the portal, so we wish him nothing but the best. Um, but, yeah, so it's exciting time for keeping it orange and blue. Let's be honest, it's an exciting time for Illini sports. Illinois baseball looks like a real contender in the Big Ten. So that's going to be fun. Transfer portal, spring football. 
let's do it. With that said, let's enjoy the second half of the national championship. Swami out. Go Purdue. Boiler up.